Uh, first and foremost, uh, we would like to, on behalf of the San Diana Public Library and the Vietnamese Heritage Museum, we would like to say thank you so much for taking the chunk out of your precious time to attend this special event. And it is special indeed. And today you're going to have a delightful afternoon with Arthur Lesber. And he's going to tell a story. It's a part of our story. And as we all know that the um, story of the Vietnamese boat people collectively, it's a story of sadness, story of hope, story of survival, story of courage and resilience. And we all know that the majority of us here in Vietnamese, we understand our root, and that is after 1975, the fall of Saigon. There's a huge exodus of Vietnamese people escaping the country to avoid political persecution and to seek freedom and better opportunity for their children. And it is a story that we have had for a long time. And it's part of the world history, not just American history, but the world history that because a lot of Vietnamese to spread out all over. But today, you're going to experience a special story through a perspective, a compassionate perspective by author and photographer Les Berg, a specifically refugee from Hong Kong. And it's going to be emotional, it's going to be personal. Like for me, I was a child of the Hong Kong refugee in 1979 when I was eight and a half years old. And it's going to be special for me and for you too. And this is important for us to, to keep our root alive because our children, grandchildren, and our descendants will, they will find where they're coming from. And it is important to keep it alive, our stories, the Vietnamese American story. Thank you so much. And at this point, what I'm just gonna do some housekeeping. Um, we're going to, uh, I'm going to introduce Mr. Dao Thuy from the Vietnamese Heritage Museum, and we're going to listen to the presentation. And we have books by Mr. Let's Burn out there, 24 copy ready, autographs later on, and we're going to do a drawing, and then we're going to have singers and performers, and it's going to be a special, special event. Without much further ado, I want to introduce you, Mr. Dao Thuy, up uh, here, David Me Heritage Museum. Give him a big hand, please. <laughs> Thank you. Trước tiên, Châu Thuy xin cảm ơn tất cả các cô chú, các anh chị đã dành thời gian chiều hôm nay, một ngày nắng ấm, nhưng mà chúng ta có mặt nơi đây để. Uh, theo dõi một cái chương trình rất là đặc biệt để đón um, đón chờ và một, một người tác giả một người nhiếp ảnh gia đã đưa rất là nhiều những hình ảnh vào trong lịch sử sau đây thì chương trình xin có một vài lời trong tiếng Anh. Good afternoon everyone. On behalf of Vietnamese Heritage Museum, VXM, we would like to thank each of you and express my deepest appreciation for your presence today. We would like to thank you the Santana Library uh, staff and their help in organizing, organizing today's event. Santa Ana Library and VXM continue work together to bring culturally relevant and educational events to our community. VXM was established in 2016 and become a non-profit organization. Our mission is to preserve the value artifact of the Vietnamese refugee and our most important goal is to record the story of the Vietnamese refugee. Despite the momentous challenge in the COVID-19 pandemic in the last three years, our staff members had tried hard to meet online and work tirelessly toward to our goal. The primary objective of our research for the Vietnamese refugee history is searching for the benefactor who helped the Vietnamese boat people during the escape attempt. Uh, fortunately, while we were searching the internet, the, we 
found on the internet the actual ordinary photo from Mr. Bird took the Vietnamese boat people catch our, our eyes. Um, without any hesitation, we contact the photo owner and ask for uh, his permission to display the previous photo on the VHM website. After multiple contact and building the close relationship with Mr. Bird, uh, that's why we are able to organize today's event. Mr. Bird joined the Royal Hong Kong Marine Police in commander in 1976 after the fall of Saigon. On April 30, 1975, thousands of Vietnamese boat people start flooding Hong Kong water. At that time, Mr. Bird was a Hong Kong Coast Guard, so he encountered the ill fate Vietnamese boat people dripping along the open sea in Fajo, Champagne. Uh, his empathy to those hopeless refugees thus meet the world to rescue as much as both people as he could. We feel fortunate that Mr. the world was able to capture those critical and historical moments with his camera. His photo now has become a precious part of Vietnamese refugee archive. Now I would like to introduce Mr. Bird, the author, and the Vietnamese boat people hero. Uh, firstly, um, thank you all very much for coming along today. Um, and uh, I would like to thank Tony and all his staff at the Santa Ana Public Library for hosting this event. And I'd like to thank Tui for, and everyone, of course, at the museum, the Vietnamese Heritage Museum, for inviting me to come out here um, to California and, and speak to your staff and, and all your friends. So thank you very much. Um, in a little while, I'll be showing you some photographs. Uh, I was lucky enough um, during my career, starting in 1976, to carry a camera with me in my kit bag. Um, now, of course, you can imagine that when you're out at sea, you, every situation you cannot photograph because you're too busy um, dealing with the various things that are going on. Um, but uh, when circumstances permitted, I took photographs where I could. Um, and those photographs I kept for 40 years. Um, and then uh, I decided to put them in the book. And of course, behind each story, uh, behind each picture, there's a story. Um, so I began to write the stories and the, sto the memories came back and as you will see uh, in a little while, I'll tell the stories behind each photograph that I took. Um, I think we're going to have a little bit of music before the start of the presentation. So uh, I look forward to speaking with you again in a little while. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, um, I'm very honored to be here to be part of the VHM team, uh, VA, VA team to, uh, for this introduction of Mr. Bird's book. And um, I also here to uh, present to you the musical performance um, we have today in the house to refugee boat people who are uh, successful singer and performers who have been actively uh, participate with the community throughout the years. And um, I would like to introduce that win and Mai Tan Thuy. So Mai Tan Thuy, everybody knows she's a very well-known singer in our community. She has probably the longest history of being um, the longest journey after, um, after leaving Vietnam looking for freedom. Her journey took six months for her to arrive um, into where she can be settled. So, um, my Tan Thuy and Dak Nguyen, is gonna, uh, Dak is also a boat person that uh, arrived in the Philippines in the 1990s. And he's also um, a successful musician who 
helped the community with uh, many musical performances, and today he will perform to us the song that all of you will touch your heart, that you all know, a song by um, Viet Dũng. Một món quà cho quê hương, a small gift from my home country. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Dad. Um, uh, wonderful to be here, and also um, want to especially thank Mr. Bird uh, for being so empathetic to the Vietnamese uh, boat refugees, especially the one in Hong Kong. I would love to know you later on. Be cool if you have some book in audio form that I can read, I can listen to. That'd be nice. Okay. Uh, Vietnamese boat people history. 
um, so much pain. So that song was uh, about uh, sending, uh, uh, besides, you know, using the uh, imagery of sending gifts, uh, you know, from candies to uh, need, um, you know, sewing needles to tears, just sending hope, all the hope and also all the pain. Thank you very much for listening. And next, my name is Mình thì uh, xin cảm ơn quý vị và uh, sau đây để tiếp tục chương trình thì cho phép Mai Thanh Thúy cũng đại diện là một người thiền nhân Việt Nam và có lẽ là Mai Thanh Thúy là một người vượt biên có lẽ lâu nhất trong khoảng thời gian 6 tháng và khi đó thì Mai Thanh Thúy còn chỉ là một bé gái rất là nhỏ cũng mái tóc như thế này dài dài nhưng mà ít tuổi hơn vâng à, cho phép mai thanh thúy cùng anh nguyễn đức đạt à, giúp mai thanh thúy đàn và bài hát đầu tiên cho mai thanh thúy gửi đến ca khúc được mang tên triều tây đô của nhạc sĩ lam phương mời quý vị thưởng thức một đêm em mơ mình dịu dịp đưa nhau về thăm quê xưa với vườn câu thề bàn tay anh đang dịu em bước trên cỏ khô đi trong hoang vắng chiều tây đô bờ sông yêu xưa ta ao thướt tha mỹ miều Sao anh không thấy về ninh kiều Dường như em nghe đời nắng chiếu một màu đêm Đêm như manh áo buồn chưa quen Mai Thanh Thúy cũng rơm rớm nước mắt 
Bởi vì chẳng có thể nào quên những cái giây phút mình vượt biển khó khăn như thế Và Mai Thanh Thúy cũng xin thân ái kính chúc tất cả các cô chú, anh chị em Cũng như tất cả các bạn bè gần xa luôn thật là dồi dào sức khỏe và để cho tiếp tục chương trình cho phép Mai Thanh Thúy hát thêm một bài hát nữa mang âm hưởng hơi huế tí xíu và ca khúc được mang tên Thương về miền Trung mời quý vị lắng nghe.
that boat, um, although it looks quite sturdy, uh, it's a sailing boat, as you can see, south of Lantau Island. Um, there were 163 people on that boat. Um, it's probably built for more like about five or six people. Uh, most of them were uh, below, below decks, lying down. Uh, there was actually no room to move. So they were actually very, very lucky to make it. Um, that was another type of boat that used to come into Hong Kong in the late 1970s. A metal hull, motorized boat, quite common. Uh, usually in very, very poor condition. I often used to wonder how some of them made it. And I, I used to wonder how many didn't. Um, if your engine broke down, basically you were stranded. Um, probably five, six hundred miles out to sea. Uh, you would then be at the mercy of whatever came next. Um, a very similar boat to the one you just saw earlier. Um, they've got they've rigged up an awning um, to protect them from the from the sun. Um, there were always seemed to be lots of children on these boats. Um, uh, families. Uh, you can see the state of the sea at the back. It's actually quite rough. Uh, so uh, I often used to wonder how they made it. I don't think there's any official figures, as far as I know. Maybe someone here knows how many people actually left Vietnam. I'll come to that a bit later. Um, this is a site that we would see, or I would see, almost every day. Um, I, I, I took this photograph of the boat after we had intercepted it. And you can see uh, on the faces they've crossed the South China Sea. They've made it to Hong Kong and they now really don't know what's going to happen next. So this was a daily sight. This is a um, quite common in 1979. Um, it's a river boat. It has a flat bottom. It's a flat keel under the water, not a pointed one, which means it's not suitable for going out into the ocean. Uh, it's, a, it's a boat that normally would ply in a river. Um, but how on earth a boat like that with probably 60 or 70 people on board would make it, I don't know. You can see the state of the wood. Um, is rotten, broken. Uh, the engine probably was uh, in, in very poor condition and it's very low in the water. So a, a big wave and that would turn over very, very quickly. Um, and these boats were quite common in 1979, <coughs> which I think um, was an example of how desperate people were to get away. Uh, this is two photographs of the same boat. Uh, you can see my boat in the bottom left-hand corner. That, that's one of my guys there waiting for the line to be thrown. There's a, a sign uh, at the top of the boat saying SOS, uh, Vietnamese Refugees. Um, you can see in the, in the, in the right-hand photograph, two of my guys are on the boat talking to uh, the, the woman with the baby. Um, our first job, uh, if there was no rescue, would be to ascertain the uh, condition of the people on the boat. And if uh, medical attention was needed, uh, if we could, out at sea, we would give medical attention. That was our first priority. Um, in, in this particular case, the baby, <coughs> the baby was so sick that we uh, had to arrange a helicopter to take the baby and the mother to hospital. Um, most people were sick. Uh, they suffered from uh, malnutrition, dehydration, uh, and often dysentery. This is another example of uh, dealing with a, uh, with a vessel with the outboard um, Zodiac boat.
You can see here the children are being transferred from, um, from their boat onto, onto my boat. The children were was always a concern because of the, uh, the illness. Some boats didn't make it. Um, they sank uh, as we were approaching them. Uh, and the, the, these two groups were quite lucky. Uh, th these two photographs are taken on board the launch, police launch. And, and in both cases, their boats sank when these people were rescued. I couldn't take a photograph during the rescue because we were too busy. And uh, these boats are being escorted in. The, I think their engines had given up. And so we are actually towing them in towards Hong Kong. Um, yeah, the song earlier was about <clears throat> 1979. And I just want to give you a, an idea of what it was like in Hong Kong. The, along the bottom are the years. Along the side are the tens of thousands of people that arrived. You can see starting in 1975, there's about three or four thousand. But in 1979, uh, we had nearly 70,000 people arrive by boat uh, to in, into Hong Kong alone. Of course, they were going all over Southeast Asia, but in Hong Kong alone, uh, in 1979, there was uh, nearly 70,000 people came. Um, I think this, uh, I've spoken to a few people today. Some, someone told me they, they went to Malaysia um, and some to Thailand. You can see uh, the directions in which people left. Southern Vietnam. Uh, on the right, it's uh, Indonesia, Palawan of the Philippines, and then Hong Kong was very, very popular in 1979 because Hong Kong declared itself as a port of first asylum, which meant if you came to Hong Kong and, and you were a refugee, then the UNHCR, the uh, United Nations, will, would arrange um, settlement overseas. Which, so Hong Kong became very, very popular in 79. The problem for us in Hong Kong in 1979 is that we didn't have the resources to deal with so many people. This is the uh, government dockyard. Uh, this is not land, this is water. And these are boats. They're all Vietnamese boats. There's about probably 50 or 60. And you can see the number at the top, 9,000. On one particular day, I, I counted, or rather I was told, I didn't count them all, um, there were 9,000 people waiting to be processed. And the processing area is under that awning. That's where the UN and the Immigration Department interviewed everyone. So this is actually is a queue of people waiting to be interviewed. Uh, I think you'd be, some of you will be familiar if you've actually been there with the term the black warehouse. You can see the roof of the black warehouse here at the bottom. The black warehouse was the actual boat sheds that were cleared out um, for accommodation. Uh, and, and here are some photographs of it. Um, top left hand corner is outside the, the, the black warehouse. And, and inside these photographs are of people who been transferred from those boats uh, into the warehouse. I know it was government policy not to try not to uh, have people stay in here for more than two or three days. Um, but in 1979, there was a, there was a bit of a logjam of people. So some people ended up staying in 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 this uh, in this warehouse for, for several weeks before they could be moved on to a camp. Um, a couple of shots from a camp. Uh, the one on the left is called Chi Ma Wan. And the one on the right is Daya Chao. Uh, Daya Chao was built in the late 1980s, but I'll come on to that later. 
but that's an example of a couple of photographs from, from inside the camp life. So these people would have landed and been in the, in the Black Wire House for a while uh, before being moved into a camp where they're awaiting interviews with um, the various countries that are taking set settlements. Of course, 19, 1979 was a busy year for us for another reason. Um, the ships started to arrive. Uh, this is the Wai Fong. Uh, it, it had 3,600 3, people, passengers. Uh, most of them lived in the cargo hold. Uh, it was in pretty poor condition. I took, I took, this is actually the cover of my book. I took this photograph uh, whilst my boat was alongside the Wai Fong, whilst we were dealing with what was going on. Um, and I used that, that photograph for the cover of my book. And I also like to show that, which is a close-up of those two little girls um, who would be probably about in their 50s now, um, as all people from the uh, Huifong were accepted as refugees and resettled. The um, Huifong was followed by the Skylark. There's 2,600 people on that ship. And then the third ship was quite a remarkable story, actually. Um, this is a idyllic looking beach in South Lantau Island. Um, and it was the scene of uh, a, a beaching, if you like, um, by a ship called the Sen On, which came in on the 26th of May, 1979. I know that because I was actually on the beach when it came in. That's, that's not me. Um, that, <laughs> this is not my photograph. Um, I was on the, I was on, when this photograph was taken, the Senon has run aground, and I'm already on the beach, uh, trying to help uh, people get off the ship, because we were worried that the ship, when it hit the sand, was gonna capsize. And there was over a thousand people on board. But you can see when this photograph was taken, which was a few hours later, most of them have got, up, got off and managed to get ashore. Uh, I did manage to take one photograph that day. It's really damaged. Uh, you can see the ship. I'm standing on the beach when I took that, and most people are still on. Uh, it's damaged because I kept going in back into the water and my camera got damaged. So uh, that's the only photograph that was survived, I'm afraid. But I did go back the following day and take a that photograph. Uh, I, I had to go back to do a, a second search of the ship uh, in case uh, um, someone had been left behind. Um, but there, there, there were several people on that ship. Um, there's Kang. Kang has become a, uh, a good friend. Uh, he was an, uh, in, the, in the army in South Vietnam and he was a passenger on that ship. Uh, and there's other people uh, that are in my book who've written their stories um, and they were all on the Senon and they're people that I've reconnected with um, in recent years and they've been very kind and told me their stories and I've been able to write them and put them in the book. Uh, if we can just qu quickly take a look at that again. If we can move on to 1988, 1989, and 1991, you can see something else has happened in the late 1980s. More people have started to leave Vietnam again in the late 1980s. And in Hong Kong, there were 13 refugee camps in 1989. The problem for us was we now had 60,000 people in those camps and Western countries like the US and the UK and the European countries had stopped taking refugees. So people were arriving in Hong Kong, we were putting them in the camps and then they had nowhere to go. So, international 
discussions were taking place and we were saying, what are we going to do with all these people? But on one particular day, uh, I was given an order to stop, stop bringing them in. Out on the southern boundary, we were to find somewhere to put them. Um, you can see a red ring there. There's a small island called Daya Chao. That's the island. It's only 1.4 square miles. Uh, you could walk from one side to the other in 10 minutes. It's a very small island. And I was told to put all new arrivals, all new Vietnamese, on this island. Now, there's no fresh water, there's no food, there's no power, there's no lights, there's no accommodation, there's no sanitation. Uh, and we're the Marine Police and we are being told to put everybody on that island. So, from day one, I started to take photos of uh, what was going on. Uh, you can see in the top left hand corner, we're trying to document everyone. We're trying to replicate what was going on in the government dockyard. On the right hand picture here, you can see uh, people are starting to make their own houses on the beach. Uh, that's one of my boats doing the first delivery of food. Food was that day was rice and beans. Um, and those two photographs are the congestion of boats in, on the, in the bay and people basically just standing and looking and waiting to find out what's going to happen next. By the end of the first week we had 3,000 people on the island. Uh, I had a staff of 12 and we had to look after these guys um, as best we could without any support or very little. Um, people started to make their own accommodation on the island. You can see on the left they are living under sailcloth. The family in the middle have found a, a place between the rocks. Uh, this looks a bit dramatic here. Actually this was built by the guy inside, the father, who was very concerned at night because there were a lot of single men on the island and he built that little house of um, corrugated um, wire mesh that he'd found on the beach. And in the top right hand corner, I don't know if you can see it, there's a lot of tents. The British Army donated um, some tents for the refugees uh, after the first week. Uh, there was always lots of kids on the island and every time I took my camera out I was followed around by this lot and uh, of course it was a great adventure for them. They thought it was great being on a desert island, um, playing in the surf on the beach. Of course their parents were not so pleased about what was going on. But um, yeah, there were a lot of, lot of um, young kids. But after a year, the, the Hong Kong government built that camp on the island, but it would only hold 3,000, and within a couple of years, they knocked it down and built another one, this one here, on the same spot, and this held 10,000 people. So a lot of people lived in this camp um, from 1992 until 1996, and in 1996, uh, the whole thing was demolished. Um, because the majority of those guys, I'm afraid, were repatriated to Vietnam. Most of them. Uh, that's one of my photos from the island. That's there for no particular reason other than the fact that I quite like it. <laughs> uh, back to him. He's a soldier on the Senon. And uh, there we are. That was taken last week. Uh, in Santa Monica. We're having lunch. That guy in the middle is this guy here. And the, the lady is his wife, who was also on, on the boat, on the ship. So, you can see the photograph on my laptop there. In that photograph, 
we're all standing on the beach together in 1979, and now we are sitting in a restaurant 43 years later. Yeah, it's quite, it's quite an emotional lunch, actually. We had a lot to talk about. Um, uh, it, it, that's, that's here in, in the US. Um, this is another friend of mine. They're, they're at the airport going to London. Um, these guys got uh, a UK um, acceptance. And he wrote to me and told me that as a refugee, he never had a camera. And could I find him some photographs of something relevant to his family? So I was able to find this collage uh, and we put it together and I gave it to him, uh, or rather I sent it to him. Uh, that's him, uh, his name's Bao, Bao Vu, and he lives in London and when we finish our tour here, we're going to London and I'll be meeting him. So another lunch, another reunion, <laughs> which is great. Um, in, in Hong Kong, there's a lady called Evelyn Liang, uh, and she was a charity volunteer in the camps. And she used to help people paint or teach kids how to paint. Uh, she's an artist as well. Um, and the Chinese university offered to put on an exhibition of all the Vietnamese art that she had collected over the years. Um, by teaching in the camps and she very kindly invited me to join her and uh, display my photographs. So we had a joint exhibition at the Chinese University uh, in Hong Kong and she's very supportive of uh, uh, the refugee cause. Uh, you'll probably recognize someone on there. Uh, the handsome guy on the right is uh, Tui, as you know. And we were, we were uh, on Little Saigon TV earlier this week. Um, that almost is the, the end. Uh, this photograph, that's me by the way. <laughs> uh, this, this photograph was taken the day we were going to Daya Chow to start that camp. Um, and that was a, a three year job. So this was day one. We were going out to Daya Chow to look at the island and to start putting people on. Um, and those are my two books. Uh, this is the one we're talking about now. That's the one I wrote three years ago uh, on a different subject, but similar. Um, that concludes my talk. Thank you very much. to see a collection of photos evokes a lot of emotion, roller coaster. Khi mà mà xem được những cái hình này, cái cái cảm xúc của mình rất là rất là kiểu mình rất cảm cảm động. Tại vì Tony cũng cái hồi nhỏ tám tám tuổi rưỡi ở trong cái trại Samsebo thì một năm rưỡi thì mình thấy vậy mình cũng rất là cảm xúc. Okay. Thank you for chronicle our story and our journey. It's so important because as refugee boat people, we, because of the environment, we don't have those pictures to remember. Nhiều người tị nạn Việt Nam thì mình thì cái cái khúc đó mình không có giữ được những cái hình ảnh của trong cái cái khúc lịch sử đó thì mình rất cảm ơn cảm tạ ông Per Les Per đã <laughs> okay. uh, thank you so much for, uh, again, Mr. Burr, thank you for keeping that uh, our story alive and we, we truly appreciate your compassion and your big heart and it's very emotional. Thank you. Okay, so at this point, I want to present you an, a special, special presentation, and that is Mr. Bird's going to donate the camera that he took those pictures to the Vietnamese Heritage Museum. Yeah.
Again, I don't know what to say, but this is the moment that... Is that, it? Is that it? Right after we contact uh, Mr. Bird and we asking him if he still have a camera with him. And he said, yes. And the next question, can you donate it to the museum? He said, why not? Khi mà Châu Thủy liên lạc với ông Les Bird thì Châu Thủy biết là sau khi mà còn tác công một thời gian dài để xin phép ông có những tấm hình thì Châu Thủy hỏi ông rằng ông còn giữ cái máy chụp mà ông đã chụp những tấm hình đó thì ông nói ông còn và ngày hôm nay trước mặt mọi người đây Châu Thủy đón nhận cái máy chụp từ ông On behalf of the Vietnamese refugee community, I would like to take this opportunity to thank you, Mr. Bird, and also Ms. Marian, his wife. In compassion to the Vietnamese boat people, and also the effort to preserving those historical photos that now become the precious for the Vietnamese Heritage Museum. Um, I would like to present to you Apply. I would like to read it on the behalf of EHM. This certificate, this certificate of proudly presented to Mr. Lesberg in recognition for your outstanding dedication and commitment to the Vietnamese Refugee Association and your donation of the valueless camera that has been used for capturing extraordinary photos of the Vietnamese boat people during the refugee crisis period in Hong Kong. the Vietnamese Heritage Museum pin for him. <laughs> and I would like to invite uh, Marianne up here, please. And this is actually after we talk and Marianne who also helping uh, less to keep those photos for a long time. So thank you very much. Actually, the lady who, who carried the camera to meet her birth is uh, his daughter. <laughs> so, uh, Toa, stand up. <laughs> Thank you very much. Okay, ladies, okay, ladies and gentlemen. So we're going to have the Q and A. Just you know, like go uh, hard. Uh, so we're going to invite Mr. Bird to the uh, chair here, and if you, we're going to open up questions, and we're going to pass around the microphone right there. And if you want to ask questions or have something to say, please uh, raise your hand, and we'll pass the microphone to you. Okay, so let's start. Who has the question? Well, I have one. Oh, oh go ahead. Xin cảm ơn ông Bird. Chúng tôi nghĩ rằng đây là một cuốn sách mà rất nhiều ý nghĩa, đặc biệt là cho 
về Việt Nam hải ngoại. À, câu hỏi của tôi là cái tình cảm của ông lúc đó như thế nào? Chắc chắn là rất thương rất quý về Việt Nam mà chúng tôi muốn được nghe ông hôm nay nói trực tiếp để cho chúng tôi có thể cảm ơn ông. À, uh, you say thank you so much for the book and the imagery and thank you for the, your compassion, your heart. And he's wondering about the, when you snap, when you capture these images, pictures, you must have a, some kind of passion or more importantly, uh, compassion toward the Vietnamese people. And we kind of wonder what are the emotions, why you capture these, that motivate you to capture these, this picture. And again, he said, thank, on the behalf of the Vietnamese community, thank you so much. Thank you. Um, when, uh, when I first started working with the Marine in Hong Kong um, in 1976, the amount of boats coming into Hong Kong were very few. Uh, it was all part of our job. And we didn't know at that time it was going to escalate into a huge 20-year exodus. Um, but I found the boats interesting. So initially, I was taking photographs of boats because I'm interested in boats. But then, over the next two or three years, uh, the boats that were arriving and the people were arriving, uh, we realized, or I realized, this was the start of a huge uh, issue, worldwide issue. Um, and uh, I just wanted to try and capture it whilst it was still there because we didn't know how long it would it would last and although people were interested i could see firsthand that it was going to be a huge worldwide issue straight away whereas maybe other people were a little bit they, they weren't fortunate as i was to be in that position and they and people weren't really appreciative of what was happening but you can see from my photographs there, any, any human being would realize that this, this is a huge humanitarian issue. Uh, and I wanted to capture it, um, uh, just for posterity really, because it was, it, was turned, it was developing into such a big thing. And you know, a huge amount of people, there were 210,000 people from Vietnam arrived in Hong Kong uh, in the time that I was working. And, you know, it's a lot of people leaving home. Um, so I just wanted to capture it on camera. I'm going to let uh, Mr. Doughty translate it because my Vietnamese is a little bit so. Những gì ông chia sẻ là tại vì trong suốt cái thời gian đó, sau trong cái thời gian phục vụ ở dưới là một người bị hải quân của Hoàng gia Anh, ông sang đó ông tình nguyện và ông sau những cái chuyến đi ra ngoài biển và thấy người tị nạn của chúng ta đã trải qua rất là nhiều những đau khổ như vậy thành ra ông ông đã có ý định và muốn cứu vớt um, thành ra đó là những cái mà ông muốn chia sẻ với chúng ta um, ngoài ra thì um, có châu thụy ở đây nếu mà quý vị có bất cứ câu hỏi gì bên viện bảo tàng di sản người việt thì cứ sẵn sàng hỏi để mà châu thụy có thể trả lời dạ dưới kia có một người có câu hỏi um... As a refugee in the the Pulau, Pulau Vidong Island, and I would like to say thank to you. You are our people, heroes. You saving people. And I would like to ask you if during the time you work, because you are in the military, right? And during the time you're working, you rescue people. And then we know that the people that we uh, across the border illegally. So when you rescue them, did you get trouble with your military? And then um, how you uh, respond to the, sometimes if you ask um, your, um, like, like higher level, you ask for the permission to save people. If they say no to you, not to save the people because I, Myself, I, I noticed and I um, evident lots of uh, case during the time and then um, some of the military boat, they try to save the people on the sea, 
but they could not because there are higher levels that know. So if you were in the situation, what would you do? Thank you. Thank you for the question. Um, uh, no, in, in Hong Kong, in Hong Kong uh, the government from the beginning said we will take everybody. We will not turn anyone away. Everybody comes in and then they can process and find out where they come from. But because life at sea is very, very dangerous, there is, there's no question about seeking permission. Uh, anyone coming from Vietnam, we, we must bring them in. And, and the second rule, which is a maritime rule, a general humanitarian rule, it's everyone's duty at sea. If someone is in distress or someone is in danger, you must save them. You must. And now, if, you, if you've heard of people not doing that, then they're breaking maritime and regulations and, and humanitarian regulations. But for us, and I work with everybody in my unit for 10, 20 years, we never, we never turn anyone away, never. We, we, ne we never had to seek permission. Câu trả lời của ông là trong cái luật hàng hải thì không có quyền từ chối để cứu bất cứ người nào trong khi người ta đang gặp nạn. Thành ra cái trường hợp của ông thì cũng như vậy. Ông là người đã tình nguyện sẵn để giúp đỡ. Thành ra ông đã đón nhận tất cả những người tị nạn trong cái lúc cái hoàn cảnh khó khăn nhất của họ. Thank you, Mr. Bird. Um, first of all, I'd like to say that all what you have done uh, preserve the precursor to what it became the American fabrics. I thank you. Secondly, my name is Smithy Lu. I am the head of the Vietnamese American Concern Group here in Los Angeles. And I'd like to have a request. You mentioned Mr. Bao Vo, that you're going to be meeting him for lunch. Will you convey to him um, my website, vacg.org, because I would like to get in touch with him and to find out more about the Vietnamese becoming British citizens over there and what kind of organization they have. I'd like to find out more. I would appreciate it if you do that for me. Thank you. I don't have any question. Any question? It's not more, yeah, I think it's more of a question uh, or, yeah, a response from you as a, as a tank traveler. I got to end up with you, sorry. Um, I consider you a tank traveler, which is a good thing. You know, uh, we don't have much of a people like yourself um, you know, being aware of all these things. And it's, and it's a very marvelous thing that you're doing. Like, honestly, you went out of your way and, you know, um, for, for something that you, you followed and you saw and you pursued for it. Um, if you were to, uh, have the grandchildren of these fellow um, uh, people that we see in struggle and stuff, and without any emotional thought or without any um, idea of where their parents had come from or where their struggles had come from, what would be a key thing that you would tell them to be able to follow on and to pursue for their happiness and not end the human experience, because it's kind of hard to end it, but I guess kind of point to the right direction. Uh, thank you. Uh, I, I think to answer your, your question about the, the second and third generation uh, people maybe who were born in, in the US, um, I think it's really important for everyone to understand their heritage and the, and the, the history of the, their own people. Uh, and, and there is a lot written and there's a lot, of, there's a lot available information about what happened in Vietnam prior to uh, the 1970s. Uh, and I would, I would advise them strongly to read up and find out more, or they could read my book, actually. How <laughs> <laughs> uh, many more questions you can take? Uh, Al, you have a question? Yes, uh, Mr. Lester, thank you for having us. And we you know, we're honored to have you here. I just have one question. Um, I know you stated that you started in the Marine Unit in 1976. Um, I was wondering if you had any experience with the first boat, the from the Sun that came in Hong Kong in 1975, because my father came from that boat. And I was just wondering, I was just curious to see if you had any experience with that, 
with the first boat people that came from Vietnam. Uh, you're, you're talking about the Danish boat, the Clara Mask. Yes, uh, that rescued them. Yeah, there were 3,500 people on that boat uh, that, that came in. And they, they, they were actually, you're right, that was the first vessel from that, that left Vietnam to arrive in Hong Kong. Um, and a, a lot of those people were still, or, or some of them were still uh, in Hong Kong when I, when I started, when I joined. Uh, so although I never actually saw the ship, the ship had left. Uh, by the time I arrived, but some of the people, uh, the Vietnamese people, were still waiting to be resettled overseas. Uh, so I did see some of those people, yeah, before they left. Uh, but uh, I didn't meet the skipper. Um, but in the in the Maritime Museum in Hong Kong, there's a big display about the Clara Mask because it was the first ship, um, and a lot of people have written a lot about that because it was the very first one. So. There's a lot of information in Hong Kong about it. It hasn't been forgotten. It's, it, it, it really is remembered in the Maritime Museum. Um, câu hỏi vừa rồi um, của anh kia hỏi về cái con, con thuyền Trường Xuân là một con thuyền đến tị nạn đầu tiên ở Hồng Kông và như ông vừa nói đó thì tất cả mọi người đã đi định cư và hiện nay ở bên Hồng Kông còn một cái bức tường và họ gìn giữ lại những cái hiện vật đầu tiên của con tàu Trường Xuân đó. Yeah. Okay, about your book. Um, what is your motivation when you write your book? And what the message you deliver to the next generation? And do you have any political issue uh, behind the book? Thank you. Thank you. Uh, the motivation was to try and capture and try and uh, record that era. I was involved for 20 years in the reception of the Vietnamese boat people into Hong Kong. And it was a big part of my life. Uh, you know, I was a young man when I started. Um, and uh, the motivation was the fact that I, I was one of the few people who was there uh, and could tell it and can write. And I, the motivation was I wanted to write the story for myself and for, for everyone else. I wanted to make people aware. And I think it was important part of the book was to write it from two different angles. One is the story of the, the people who were tasked to go out and rescue, and the other angle was the stories of the people who were trying to, to make it and, and save their lives and start a new life. Um, so I was able to do that by contacting Vietnamese people who had come to Hong Kong by boat, and they were very, very good and very open, and a lot of people have explained what happened to them. and I've. Hopefully, I've reflected that in the book uh, in, in the correct way. I've tried to tried to put it in, in, in le as a level story about it, it, the book swings from one side to the other. Uh, this happens from Vietnam, and then Hong Kong tried to do this, and then from Vietnam. So I think the balance of it um, is important, and, and I've tried to reflect the feelings of people who were in the in the actual boats coming across the South China Sea as well. And I think that comes through thanks to the people who were willing to talk to me. Thank you. Thank you. So this concluded a, the Q&A, but I'm going to let Joe to finish. Trước khi chúng ta xong thì Châu Thị muốn vừa muốn dịch lại cái câu hỏi sau cùng là một cái lý do tại sao mà thúc đẩy để ông viết cuốn sách này thì sau hai chục năm với những cái gì mà ông đã làm cho người tị nạn Việt Nam của chúng ta thì ông muốn viết cuốn sách này để lại cho những thế hệ mai sau và để cho những người tìm hiểu về những cái sự mà giúp đỡ của con người với con người. Ông có hai cái phần trong cuốn sách là thứ nhất là ông muốn viết để chia sẻ cái phần của ông đối với những người tị nạn và phần thứ hai là của những người ông đã cứu giúp để mà uh, viết lại những cái gì để chia sẻ cái đời sống của họ. Um, một lần nữa Châu Thủy cho đại diện cho Viện Bảo tàng Di sản Người Việt. Cảm ơn tất cả các cô chú bác. Um, I would like to thank you everyone uh, again uh, for attending this special event for us. And now I would like to turn over to uh, Tony. Uh, so whoever lucky get a book today and get an uh, autograph for Mr. Lesbert, okay? All right, thank you so much. And um, before we go, oh, I have an answer from Mr. Burris. He's asking earlier how many refugee 
I have been in the Exodus, so while I was listening to him, I snuck on my phone. And <laughs> so it's like 700,000 700, plus escape illegally, meaning to boat, foot, ship. And then in the 90, they have 900,000 to the orderly departure program. Uh, so OPD, yeah, so ODP. So a, a total of 1.6 million Vietnamese uh, left. Uh, the, that's one of the biggest exoduses in the history of the world, really. Uh, yes. Can I ask a question? Absolutely. Um, I just wondered how many boat people are here today. Oh. Oh. I know. How many boat people are here today? Raise your hand. Yes. I think we all are. <laughs> yes. So uh, thank you, Mr. Burr, for giving us the voice. And uh, we truly, truly appreciate that and keeping the history alive. At this point, if you fill out the uh, raffle ticket to get, uh, have the privilege of having an, an autographed copy of the book, which I want to complain that I didn't get a copy yet. <laughs> but uh, we're going to call up the number. Uh, 24 copy. Once you get your ticket, you're welcome to get out there and there is a line waiting for you. To, Mr. Bird will be gladly uh, autograph the book for you. Okay? So the first ticket number is 33886 John Wayne. Okay. Getting light and oops, sorry. Go ahead. You can go like out there, line up, and then, uh, okay, so. I'm uh, Calvin from Leaders on TV. So before you sign, please, uh, to uh, the audience today. So, can you tell us uh, some more about you and Noble. Can I, my friend, do you want me to make a take a look at the And I will. I need to put my name on the John. Yeah. Yeah. Be careful. 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 Be Okay. Don't close the book because it will. Thank you so much. I'm supposed to sit next to you because you want to take a photo. Okay. Hello. My name is Hong Lin. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Is that a U? N G U Y E N. That's probably the same thing. <laughs> yeah. It should be the people getting the books that you take a photo with them. Yeah. Yes, you okay. should. Do you have your iPhone? Uh, maybe the other oh, side. Maybe the other side. Get the book first. Yeah. 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 Lay, lay good set trước rồi hay chụp. Get the book first. That's the most important one. Hold it on that side. Give me your phone. Yeah, I take the photo. Yeah, okay. You have some more. Let me try it. Okay, hold the book. Can you show the book? Yes. Thank you. 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 Thank you.